Hello, this is Dr. Rosie Kuhn, and this is Friday Feast on, on Facebook. And the intention of these Friday Friday's Feasts is to share with you a little bit about what I do as a writer, coach, person, uh, painter, and how it kind of all comes together sometimes in a theme. Uh, and so this week is a this theme today today is very similar to what we talked about last time, which was how often we tend to throw ourselves under the bus when we uh, when something comes up or where people need us or when we're um, the first line of, of uh, support for people and how sometimes we we may hurt ourselves, harm ourselves, or stress ourselves or uh, that kind of thing for the sake of other people. And uh, this today is a little bit like that, but just a little bit different. Um, and it comes from um, some work I've been doing with clients, uh, some of the themes that just pop up and that are true for me as well. And that is the idea that, so the story is the first client, we'll call her Melanie. Uh, Melanie shares with me that, um, that last week she, a friend of hers uh, passed on. This woman was much older and she hadn't, Melanie hadn't seen her for years, like five years or something like that. And Melanie went to her, um, you know, her celebration and, and Melanie said to me, I just feel like a dumbass because I didn't keep in, tr in touch with her. I could have done that and that would have made such a difference. And she was really beating herself up about the fact that, you know, she should want to keep in, in touch with people. And at the same time, Melanie is a very highly sensitive person and she's also pretty reclusive. So being around a lot of people or staying in touch with people is, 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 is kind of goes against her natural, her natural essence of being just to be a little bit more quiet and not reach out so much. So, but she's saying, shouldn't I want to stay in touch with people? Second client, her name will call her Carla. And I make these names up. So Carla um, has a brother in a different state, different, uh, different state and city. And Carla's brother is having um, a lot of challenges because he's of uh, alcohol abuse. And so, uh, and his brother, her brother is um, in, in denial that he's having problems. Uh, and that he's suffering in a sense. And, um, and so there's this challenge, this dilemma that Carla is having in saying, shouldn't I want to go help him? Shouldn't I want to go and kind of do whatever I can for this guy? Even though we're not close, he doesn't reach out to me, we haven't been close for a long time, shouldn't I want to? The third person, very similar situation, which is interesting, I find that there's these themes that show up through the week, my week as a as a support a, a coach, where these themes just show up, and and in that they show up for me too, and and my my themes how well just the third person is um, Nancy, and again we make I make up the names, and Nancy uh, has a son who's in a similar situation, he's in a lot of pain and financial suffering and emotional suffering, and he's in he doesn't want any help he doesn't he wants his mom to stay away and he again is in different different state and he doesn't want help and so what do you do and you know that it's not in a sense that she knows from experience that she can't go rescue him and at the same time it's like shouldn't I want to go I'm his mom shouldn't I want to go and be there for him even though he doesn't want me there even though I can't do anything shouldn't I want that this is a big dilemma uh, that we have in our life. I'm, um, I'm working on a painting. I was going to show that to you anyway. So anyway, this is the painting I'm working on, um, Christmas painting. And it's like, shouldn't I want this painting to be done? Be, you know, shouldn't I want, want to give this to somebody? Shouldn't I want to be magnanimous in my generosity? Shouldn't I want to be who I'm different, you know? Uh, tonight we were going. I'm going to a concert, and it's kind of the beginning of Christmas, so I have my Christmas sweater on. And here it's before Thanksgiving, and shouldn't I want to sort of be in something less festive? All of these should I want, shouldn't I want, have to do with, in a sense, socialized pressures and obligations. Shouldn't I want to be like everybody else? Shouldn't I want to fit in? Shouldn't I want to be that? And it's a big dilemma because. We're not, we're not who that, we're not necessarily, if, if I have to say, or when I hear myself say, I don't want to have to do that, I should pay attention to that. I don't want to have to, means I don't want to. 
And the, the dilemma of what is, I, what is it I want versus what should I want? Shouldn't I want this? Rather than no, I sh well, maybe I should want that, but I don't want that. I want this. So um, in, in helping people, supporting people, as a coach, um, you know, you can hear that a lot of my coaching clients are not coming in with, yeah, here's what I want and let's go in this direction. There's these dilemmas and how do I be present to, how do they be present to that dilemma of here's what I want, but isn't this what I should want? And I find this for myself that's true with, you know, shouldn't I be writing more books? I haven't been writing very much lately. It's like, shouldn't I want to be writing? Shouldn't I be writing? It's like, well, the fact is I'm not writing, regardless of what I want or don't want, I'm not writing. Uh, my painting isn't happening as often as, because I'm, I'm in other, other um, pursuits, if you will, that are keeping me from writing. But shouldn't I want to write? Shouldn't I want to, shouldn't I want to make a million dollars? Shouldn't I want to be famous? Shouldn't I? And all of those things, it's like, wait, 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 wait. That's one part of the question, but who are you and who am I in here that has me choose to be who I am and what's true for me. Um, I have lived kind of an unordinary life, an extraordinary life uh, is I guess a good way of putting it. And I didn't want that. <laughs> I didn't want to live. I think, I think maybe when I, you know, before I got into this body, it was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have an extraordinary life. But I didn't want an extraordinary life. I just wanted to be normal. You know, I wanted to have kids. I wanted to grow up, get married, have kids, have the life where everybody's happy and then, you know, and then I die. But that's not what happened. And I had this extraordinary life and can, will continue to have an extraordinary life. In, um, and, and how do I feel about that? And because shouldn't I have wanted that? Uh, and here's what I got. Here's what I am. So in coming back to sort of this whole thing, like how do you know and what, how do you do things, um, with uh, Carla, the one client, she's like, "How should I, how should I think about this? What should I, how should I go for, forward?" And as as a as my as a coach, I'll quite often give people practices, and not homework, but things to practice. So I said, "Here's here's what I want you to consider: is I want you to practice when you're thinking about what to do. Is do I feel obligated?" in a sense, shouldn't I do this because it's the right thing to do according to society or family or whatever? Should that, That's the shoulds. So, so don't allow yourself to make a choice based on that obligation or should. Is there guilt? I'll feel guilty if I don't. It's like just in this moment, just for the practice, see if you can not make a choice based on guilt. It's hard for us, it's, especially people who are in a sense addicted to feeling guilty about whatever they do. It's like, oh, I don't feel, I feel guilty, so I better do it, blah, blah. Third, shame. I'm, I'll, be a, I'll be a bad person. If I don't do that, that'll mean I'm a bad person. It's, and it doesn't mean that, but that's what we hear that. So when you hear yourself say that, I'm going to be a bad person or something like that, just at that point, choose not to make the decision based on shame. And fourth, fourth is um, I have something to gain by doing this. Uh, people will think I'm good. People will approve of me. Uh, people will acknowledge me because I did the right thing. Uh, so that a lot of times we do something to get. And if we're doing something to get, it's not coming from a place of real heartfelt, pure intention of this is really what I want to do. This is really in my heart, in my heart, in my heart's desire to fulfill this uh, and be of service to somebody. So it's big work to sit in. Okay, I feel obligated. I feel guilty. I feel ashamed. And yeah, I'm going to get something out of this. It's like if you really want to get clear about who you be in there, see if you can just sit on your hands and not do anything and be with what shows up when you're not doing one of those four things. And I guarantee you it's gonna show up as sad, sadness, some anger perhaps, um, some feeling bad, feelings of bad, I feel bad or just comfortable, I feel uncomfortable, and, um, and be with that. And also, uh, for instance, this uh, mother who has this son who's in you know, a difficult situation, and it's very difficult for a parent to let their child go through the, the learning that the child has to go through. This is a 41-year-old child. 
So this is not like a six-year-old child. This is a, a, old, a, a grown up that needs to be accountable for the choices they're making. And I said to her, if you're on a ship, an ocean liner in the middle of the ocean, and for some reason your son finds himself in the water, do you jump? Do you go s save him? And, you know, of course it's like, rather, I mean, it's one thing to throw yourself under the bus, you might survive that, but the likelihood of you surviving jumping in the ocean after somebody is, is a little bit bigger deal. So what do you do when you can't jump and you have to be with that place of powerlessness and hopelessness perhaps and helplessness? It's the humanness in us that has that experience because we exist, we're in this human experience, we're going to feel those things and it's important that we feel. We came here to feel that even though people don't like to hear that. So I wanna say hi, Alyssa's here, Sharon's here, Kathleen is here, Marvin, thank you guys for being here. Um, and, um, and so just, I wanted to say hi, and then to come back to, so if you're in those places where you are thinking about making choices for reasons other than because you really want to, just, I just want you to be curious about what that place is that you make choices from. Um, when I'm in that place, like I was saying this week, I haven't painted much, I haven't written much, and there's a part of that it comes up for me to say, shouldn't I write? Shouldn't I be doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And then looking at the, the stress that puts on me and I go, no, like right now, here's what I, I need to take care of for myself. Here's my heart's desire. Here's my, my, um, my, my want in that heartfelt place. And that can mean that I'm at service. It, meant, it can mean that I do acts of love and kindness for people all the time or a little bit, whatever that is. It can mean that I'm writing or painting. Uh, but it means it comes from my heart and that I think gives us the most fulfillment when all of our, our um, all of our actions come from our heart and that's what I want for you guys all right I'm sending you big hugs and love I hope this is helpful if it is hey please let other people know send this share this with whoever you like if you'd like uh, I'm open to conversations or comments or questions or if there's some themes that come up for you and you'd like me to talk about it I'd be happy to all right, big hugs. Bye for now. Very nice.